this is Thursday. This is you're probably asking, well, wait a minute, why are we live streaming on a Thursday afternoon? This is really super exciting. I'm excited about it. This is the first attempted lunar landing for the United States in over five decades. Since since April of 1972, we're talking about Apollo 17 that the last time anything from America was attempting to land on the moon. America is just one of four other countries that's ever been to the moon. Japan, just a few months back, uh, became uh, the fourth uh, U.S. or the fourth country uh, to join that exclusive club along with the Soviet uh, Union and the India. Uh, but when their lander landed on the lunar surface, it immediately right, tipped over. So we it is really hard. Space is really hard. And I want to kind of show you a couple of different things. What's happening right now, I'm going to punch up the live broadcast from NASA TV. This is actually a live broadcast. I think you can probably hear the audio underneath my voice there. This is a simulated version of what's happening right now with the lunar lander called Odysseus, otherwise known as Odi. That's the nickname for uh, Odysseus, of course, named after the Greek leader that led the Trojan War, then went out on that long 10-year journey home, otherwise known as his Odyssey. Well, it's Odysseus, or Odi for short, and it is just now less than 10 miles above the lunar surface, and the main engine is firing. And again, this is a live look at their control room in Houston, Texas. This is Intuitive Machines. Okay, so this is a very big difference and it's a very big point of reference. This is the first commercially built lunar lander. This is not a NASA mission, this is a NASA blessed mission. Uh, this is part of the CLIPS program. CLIPS is an acronym, of course, NASA loves their acronyms, right? CLIPS is, stands for Commercial Lunar Payload Services. Basically what NASA did they went out to the uh, commercial industries and said, look, we need your help. We're taking on Artemis. The Artemis manned mission to the moon should happen between 2025 and 2026. It's been pushed back now, probably to 2026. But what NASA said is, we need your help. We need payload services. We need te uh, telemetry. We want you, the cutting edge technology of American ingenuity, to, to develop all of these different systems. and." Intuitive Machines, based out of Houston, Texas, said, hey, we're going to go for the big enchilada. We're going to try to put a robotic lunar lander on the moon. And that is what is happening today in just a few moments at 424 p.m. Arizona time. So that is just, let me check the clock, 424. That is less than about eight minutes away now for this huge event in lunar exploration. Because remember, a lot of this technology that they have, have to test out is going to be critical, mission critical for the Artemis program and beyond to get men and women uh, to establish a colony on the lunar surface and all the great technological benefits that comes with space exploration. So again, we are live streaming this now. I'm kind of checking our Facebook page because I want to make sure my page is getting populated. There we go. Hey, I'm going to share this real quick. I'm going to let you guys listen in on NASA or on the Intuitive Machines control room right now. I'm going to lower my voice and let you listen in. Your antennas are facing back in direct line of sight to Earth, and you can get that ultimate confirmation once you do suspect that you have landed on the moon. The antenna alignment is an impo important element of landing on the moon, Josh. We're expecting the high gain antenna to be pointed towards Earth to confirm, but there may be a delay. We are expecting some sort of delay. I was talking to uh -oh. the mission directors talking about, about how quickly we could receive a positive confirmation after this landing process is through. And there was some dispute over how long the earliest was just about okay, 15 about seconds pictures. after we see timing of when the event is supposed to happen. So right now we're tracking about 524 p.m. Central Standard Time. So maybe anywhere from 15 seconds after that, maybe a, a few minutes, two to three minutes while we work to acquire that signal because as you mentioned the lander is going to a general area all right guys i'm going to pop them down just a little bit that control room what they're talking about there is when do they think they're going to get confirmation they're not going to get a live video feed but they're going to get confirmation from their telemetry that it is indeed successful that od is on the surface it's about 14 feet tall Right now it's about 10 miles or less from the surface. That main engine is firing. And it's really critical, that main engine, because it is a called a methylox engine. It uses methane, liquid methane, and LOX, liquid oxygen. 
it's never before tried in the vacuum of space. This is brand new technology on this lunar ma uh, module. Uh, and so it's a really critical time right now. Again, it's a couple of uh, miles up from the surface. That main engine continues to fire. Uh, let's talk about cameras because it is really cool because of course there's an Arizona connection, right? One of the cameras that's going to be used today is this. It is from Embry-Riddle University. Of course, Embry-Riddle has the main campus in Daytona Beach, Florida, as well as the West Coast campus out here in Prescott, Arizona. And they have developed a cube-like camera that's going to deploy when it's about 100 feet, when Odie is 100 feet from the lunar surface, it's going to deploy, detach, use wireless communication to take the first ever, if you will, selfie in space. They're going to photograph Odie landing on the surface, and they should get that telemetry of those pictures back within the next half hour after touchdown. Again, Embry-Riddle becomes the first university to develop this technology, the first university to be on the surface of the moon with their own technology that they developed, student-led engineering by Embry-Riddle. So that is your Arizona connection. Isn't that amazing uh, that that's going to happen uh, in this uh, uh, in this first of its kind lunar landing. So here's a quick picture of Odie from space. This was about a couple of days ago. Remember the launch. I don't know if you remember this launch. It was from a Falcon 9. It launched back on February 15th. It was delayed one day because of weather. Beautiful launch. It took about seven, eight days for the lunar module to get to the moon. It's been in orbit. And you're saying, well, why now? Why in April? or at the end of February, it's to coincide with full moon on Saturday because this is not designed to survive the lunar nights. Not, to, uh, not intended to survive the lunar nights, it's intended to survive in the daylight, in the sunlight, and that's what's happening uh, for this next several days on the surface of the moon. There's six instruments uh, developed by NASA on board. There's also six commercial instruments. The NASA uh, instruments are basically a lot of telemetry, a lot of video camera uh, technology that they're trying to time out for the Artemis mission. There's one that's going to try to figure out how much soil is picked up from this specific engine. There's another technology that's using radio waves that's trying to figure out how much propellant they have left in the tank. That's going to be critical to do that commercial technology. You want that down a little bit, Jason? Okay, a little bit down. Uh, just trying to uh, monitor how close they are to landing. Again, you're hearing that. Dynamics officer Sean One Stewart on blue team. They're monitoring the altitude right now. We're about a minute 30 from landing. So let's just monitor this live situation. Again, you're looking live, Houston, Texas, intuitive machines. This is a commercial or private company that developed this technology. Sounds like we have some data that confirms pitch over. This starts the HDA process. That's okay, hazard so detection avoidance throughout this show. You've heard Gary and I talking about the so problem. What's happening that is hazard, hazardous uh, avoidance detection. They're using lasers to map the surface of the lunar surface. They're landing near the South Pole, about 86 miles away from the lunar, 186 miles from the South Pole. They're landing in a crater called Malpert A. The reason they picked that is because of the smooth surface. Remember, again, another Arizona connection. Apollo took all of the Apollo astronauts here to Arizona and blew up a bunch of lava fields just outside of Flagstaff. That's how they trained to not only walk, but to land on the lunar surface because the lava fields up in Flagstaff resemble the lunar surface. Isn't that incredible, right? All right, again, you're looking at simulation. Let's listen in. And again, that's the time of Because we're about a minute some time away. To confirm the status of the lander. And in this process, we do have a deployment of Eagle Cam attempting to take the third person images of Nova C going down to the lunar surface. Okay, that's the one that they're one talking minute. about from Embry Riddle. They just mentioned Eagle Cam. And that's how they're going to. Uh, determine whether or not it has been a successful landing. They're probably waiting for their data. Yes, we're well on the board now. Again, the simulation that you're looking at is a computer simulation, but we're waiting for actual confirmation any minute now. 
from uh, this Houston-based so company. Here in the broadcast booth, the clock has reached the expected. We take a minute for comms to reestablish. Stand by. So there it is, by. Mission Director, beating us to it. We've reached the expected time of landing, but now is the process of waiting for comms, and we are in standby mode, as you heard it from the Mission Director, Dr. Tim Crane. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited <laughs> to get this confirmed. First landing by a U.S. company since 1972. Let's get confirmation. Again, the Eagle Cam developed by Embry One Riddle. minute has elapsed from the notes that we have, Gary, of that original burn starting at PDI. You have carrier lock. That's MD asking if we are getting the ground stations locked on to Nova C. Now they're confirming to see if it's on the ground, on the surface. Look at that guy pacing in the background on your upper right. It's got to be really intense. They've had years and years that and carrier millions of lock dollars call, Gary, We expect that to come from ground net or comm. That conversation possibly not happening on our public channel that we have access to. We're just standing by to hear that uh, come through the channels as we approach almost two minutes since we estimated the landing time we did get a few call outs on the side folks coming into the room saying there was about a two minute forgiveness in our timetables we are checking our antenna reception checking the reception there. checking antenna reception so again they might have a two minute give or take on the actual landing Just checking my Facebook page. Yep, everybody's got fingers crossed, Nicholas says. Fingers crossed. People are loving this first ever attempt in five decades since April of 1972. First US made product landing on the moon. We're just seconds away from confirmation. And we're standing by, Gary. We're standing by just uh, as we approach 5.26 p.m. Central Standard Time. And given those mission director's notes of the flexibility between what we were tracking, what we were given was just about 5.24. All stations, this is MD. Please look back through your logs and confirm the last information you had, and we'll determine if this is a comm outage. And that's the mission director, Gary. These are our notes here of what we believed. We talked about the comm outages with the lander making autonomous decisions. This is the process of going through the last okay. bit of data that came into Nova Control and working to verify, okay, this is the last bit of data. Where was this, was the lander possibly going? How do we look for it and establish those communications? Nova C uses four antennas placed at the top of the lander that are designed to uh, capture just these listening communications. listening in on mission control there in Houston at Intuitive Machines. This is a private-based company. This is a live broadcast that they are providing NASA TV that we are providing you. They are going back through the communications. We're at plus three minutes now since they expected landing. Still no confirmation yet. Boy, the tension in that room has got to be high. Body language, uh, tough to tell whether or not they have got a successful landing or if there was a major problem. Remember, this is the second company, the Peregrine Lander, uh, about a month ago, ruptured a propellant tank and on the way with our team here in the to the moon. We've decided to let's stay on this. All the chatter we are not hearing on this public channel, Gary, all things indicate that we are working to solve a communications, a possible communications uh, challenge in this moment. So we're going to continue to stand by. All right, so they are standing by. The broadcast is standing by. They're trying to... For those following along... MD Prime on Prime 1. Go for Prime. Yeah, I guess you... Hold the room looking for uh, states, and uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle the ground transmitter on Goonhilly and uh, do some RF sweeps. Is that your plan? That's correct. Roger, copy. And that's just what wow. we had in mind. All right, so that's what they're doing. They're going around the room, pulling everyone, double checking all of their data in front of them on their computer screens, trying to figure out did Odie make a successful landing now about T plus four to five minutes ago 
for the landing window. They're still trying to establish communication to figure out if Odie made a vertical upright landing. Remember, Odie's about 14 feet tall. When it was coming in for a landing, this is kind of interesting. This is what it looked like. It was going horizontal, then it flipped up vertical when they lit that main engine. That main engine lit about 20 miles above the surface. It would continue to burn all the way 10 miles down, and then it would slowly back off the propellant. It would be going about four plus miles an hour in that uh, vertical descent, and then that final burn before it touched the surface, 2.2 miles an hour. That would be compared to a senior citizen out for a brisk walk, 2.2 miles an hour for that landing in Malpert A, that crater, 186 miles off the South Pole. That is what they're trying to figure out, and they're trying to establish, again, communication issues with Odie, T plus five minutes now, that it has supposedly been on the surface, and they're just trying to confirm if it was a successful landing. To a landing time uh, of 5:23 p.m. Central Time. Well, Josh described those processes of working on the communications component to confirm yes. data from the lander, pulsing the team surrounding him to check the status. So now they're saying of it, it landed the supposedly 4:23 Arizona time. 4:23 Arizona Part time. They're still Josh trying to establish communications, communications with Odie. Fido MD on IM1. QMD. I'm looking at our uh, phase plane there for the, the last part of the flight. It looks like we had um, excellent pitch and yaw control throughout, but I did see a little bit of a roll excursion. Could it be that we landed off uh, off angle and roll in the final phase? Uh -oh. So I do see we head up to an eight degree excursion. Um, we're about to begin the, the roll maneuver, which is about terminal phase. The terminal phase, which is a, a large roll maneuver to get to. The landing attitude. That's the latest, last data point I have. Um, but up until that point, we were we were really solid. Right. So, the terminal phase begins at 30 meters. Um, or post HGA. Post HGA. Post HGA. 400 meters. Very good. All right. So they're trying to determine. Did it roll too much one way or the other from the vertical to a horizontal stance right before landing? Can. Make that go. Yeah, that was good confirmation of the process that we were very familiar with, talking about the attitude of the lander, making sure that those antennas are within direct line of sight with Earth stations, ground stations on Earth, excuse me. So they're trying to determine if it's upright. And if the antennas. Stations are also updating our pointing vector with our dishes to make sure that they're tuned in our final landing site. There's a call. We're searching for that communications back to the ground station. This one. So again, tension still high inside that control room in Houston, Texas. We have an, an entire network dedicated to trying to determine did Odie land upright. This again, this was the second the attempt. Second attempt by a U.S. commercial manufacturer, not a government manufacturer, not NASA. This is a commercially based mission to the moon. First of its kind ever. Not a government entity, but blessed by NASA as part of their CLIPS program. CLIPS standing for Commercial Lunar Payload Services. And it's uh, a program that puts out millions and millions of dollars. And basically they're challenging U.S. industries to help develop the technology that Artemis, that's the next lunar landing mission by the U.S. government and NASA Artemis set to put men and women on the moon for the first time since 1972. They're set to do that in 2026. And again, this is commercially based companies. The second one, Peregrine was a lunar lander last month that ruptured a propellant tank on the way to the moon. That had to be scuttled. This is the second attempt by uh, Intuitive Machines, it's a Houston-based company, uh, put together a 14-foot tall lunar lander called Odessus, otherwise short for Odie, and it just landed at 423, now 10 minutes ago, Arizona time. We have an onboard fault detection system for our communications that after 15 minutes with lack of communication will power cycle the radios, and then after that for another 15 minutes it will then switch antenna pairs. So we have some time here to evaluate. We do have signal 
that we're tracking. So we'll see what happens. All right, so there's the word from it's Mission Control. Call. They have a signal that they're tracking from Odie, uh, but in about five minutes or less, they have a default where it recycles or reboots the radios, reboots the signal orientation to reestablish contact. So that is apparently no news is good news at this point. They have not confirmed the landing, but this was the first that they confirmed that a signal they have been tracking a signal from Odie. They were worried about uh, a little bit of a yaw and pitch problem during descent, like it might have been off by as much as eight degrees. Eight degrees is a, a lot uh, when it comes to landing something, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles away on the surface of the moon. But no one is panicking inside that room. Can't really tell about the body Tim language. Crane confirming that it could take two phases of 15 minute increments to confirm the status of the landing. So we could be here and we'll stand by and monitor as Nova Controls to continues All right, to work well, it this It looks issue. like we could be here yeah, for a while. Let's check in with, uh, with Jason and Brad. Brad, how long do we want to go? It looks like we are going to be recycling the radios on Odie to try to establish communication. They say it might be several 15 minute cycles before they establish whether or not Odie has landed or not. Okay, uh, let's take one more listen in and then we might wrap up here since we've been on the broadcast now for about 20 minutes. Just listening in on the broadcast. There's the simulation of what Odie was doing just about 10 minutes ago. Was going horizontal, then was tilted vertical. There might have been a problem on the angle. Might have been off by a few degrees. It was supposed to make that vertical touchdown at about 2.2 miles an hour. That's kind of the pace that senior citizens walk. We're still standing by. The last call from mission director Dr. Tim Crane was that we were getting a faint signal from Odysseus's high gain antenna. Okay, there's confirmation that there is a signal being monitored from the high gain antenna. Yeah. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this up because we're gonna go back to uh, coverage here on Arizona's family. We're gonna probably have an update here at the top of the hour at five o'clock. Uh, so you've been watching a live broadcast of something that hasn't been attempted in over five decades. The first U.S. landing of a commercial All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM-1. One second. Let's We're evaluating uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. All right. First time applause has broken out inside the control room. An excellent call from our mission, mission director, Dr. Director Dr. Confirming, and over to our CEO. confirming that Steve the equipment yeah, is on the moon and we are getting a signal. They just don't know what condition Odie is in. So there's the confirmation that they have their equipment on the moon by the mission control. And there's a look at uh, intuitive machines. Houston celebrating Odysseus has found his new home an excellent call and this is our team of intuitive machines mechanics so like and their families their friends everyone who has sacrificed so much to, to make it this to, uh, far stations. it's a lot of happy people there in Houston back to the control room but again they're monitoring what the condition of Odie is in they are tracking a signal. They confirm that their equipment, Odie, is on the surface of the moon. They just don't know what condition it's in. How about that call? So, all yeah, right, so here's uh, what we're going to do. We are going to, to end this uh, live stream signal, broadcast. We appreciate your support right here on Arizona's Family. Uh, we appreciate your excitement about space exploration and becoming the first uh, landing on the moon since April of 1972 with Odie. Uh, they have confirmation that Odie is on the surface. They don't know what condition 
ODI is in. So we probably will start to get to understand what that means within the next 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, I'll be on the live broadcast of the five o'clock news on CBS 5 and 3 TV right here on Arizona's Family. And we'll pass along as much information as we can. We should get video confirmation from the onboard cameras from uh, ODI as well as the Eagle Cam, that Eagle Cam uh, was taking that first selfie in space and it was developed by students at Embry-Riddle University, their Daytona Beach campus, as well as their campus here in Prescott, Arizona. So that's a great Arizona connection as well. So we're gonna wrap up this live broadcast. I'm Seen McLaughlin. Thanks for joining me live here on all of your favorite streaming channels. And of course, uh, stream Arizona's family uh, as much as you like, 24 uh, hours a day right here on Arizona's family. We appreciate your support and we will talk to you soon.